Although working in space is risky and occasionally fatal, there have been times when a problem has arisen and the astronauts have been able to recover. Take today, March 16, 1966, as an example. Dave Scott and Neil Armstrong had just begun the Gemini 8 mission. In an effort to do some docking maneuvers, they grabbed hold of an Agena target. Then the spacecraft began to spin erratically. While still far from ground stations, they undocked and discovered themselves falling once every second. There was an open thruster. Armstrong made a quick decision to activate the landing mechanism and stabilize the ship. The astronauts' lives were saved despite the mission's brief duration. Here are some other scary moments that astronauts in space faced and survived. Friendship 7 False Landing Bag Indicator You can imagine the amount of media attention John Glenn received throughout his three-orbit mission since he was only the third American in space. His landing bag apparently detonated while he was still in space. According to information NASA received, NASA suspected that the heat shield on Friendship 7's Mercury spacecraft, which had its landing cushion underneath it, had come loose. Officials ultimately instructed Glenn to maintain his retro rocket package attached to the spacecraft during re-entry rather than discard it in the hopes that it would keep the heat shield on. Glenn safely made it home. It was discovered to be a false indicator. Apollo 11, empty fuel tank. In response to Neil Armstrong's Houston, Tranquility Base, here, the Eagle has landed announcement during Apollo 11, the capsule's communicator Charlie Duke said, Roger, Tranquility, on the ground, we imitate you. A group of men are on the verge of going blue. We've resumed breathing. Many thanks. Armstrong was in charge of a spaceship that was virtually out of fuel, so they weren't holding their breath just because it was the first landing on the moon. The Eagle spacecraft overshot its landing, and Armstrong did a series of maneuvers to put it on relatively flat ground. Accounts say he had less than 30 seconds of fuel when he landed on July 20, 1969. Apollo 12, Lightning Strike After Apollo 12 left the ground and began its ascent into orbit, a lightning strike struck the rocket, causing it to enter what seemed to be a zombie-like state. The astronauts were unclear of what to do since the rocket was still in flight. Apollo 12 was on its way after a scrambling controller provided an order that basically restarted the vehicle. Before continuing with the rest of the mission, NASA did take some time to conduct some more verification in orbit. The organization also modified its policies about launches during bad weather. Apollo 13 – Oxygen Tank Explosion On April 13, 1970, the astronauts of Apollo 13 carried out a regular stir of the oxygen tanks. They then felt the spacecraft tremble around them and alert lights began to flash. It found out that an oxygen tank that had been blown up in the Odyssey's service module due to a sequence of ground failures had caused some system damage. The healthy lunar module Aquarius, which was initially intended to land on the moon, let the astronauts to live for days with very little electricity. They made it home, chilly and worn out but still very much alive. Apollo Soyuz Test Project – Toxic Vapors During Landing the Apollo Soyuz test project was designed to evaluate the interoperability of American and Russian technology in orbit. Astronauts and cosmonauts met in orbit using an Apollo command module and a Russian Soyuz to commemorate the first trip between the two countries. When the Americans returned to Earth, their spacecraft unintentionally became filled with vapors from the thruster fuel, almost resulting in tragedy. I began to grunt breathe to maintain lung pressure and keep my thoughts clear. Vance was just hanging in his straps as I turned to look at him. In a NASA history book about the incident, Commander Deke Slayton noted that the man was unconscious. Brand rapidly recovered once Slayton made sure everyone on board had gas masks, and the mission was soon over. Near the fire, a perchlorate canister that was being fired by the Mir crew for extra oxygen suddenly caught fire. NASA astronaut Jerry Leininger found that at least one oxygen mask on board was broken as they rushed to put out the fire. The crew was able to immediately put out the fire. The crew managed to live, avoided having to leave, and helped NASA learn lessons that they are still applying on the International Space Station today, despite the fact that it temporarily disrupted life on the station. SDS-51 Fahrenheit Abort to Orbit On this flight, the Challenger crew experienced two aborts. The first incident happened on July 12 at T3 seconds when a coolant valve in one of the shuttle's engines broke down. After fixing the issue, NASA experienced another launch abort shortly after liftoff on July 29. The crew was forced to abort to orbit because one of the engines shut down too soon. However, the crew was able to complete its mission, which included conducting numerous scientific experiments aboard Space Lab. SDS-114 – Foam Hitting Discovery The destiny of the entire shuttle program rested on Discovery's shoulders when it took flight in 2005. After the Columbia accident in 2003, NASA made a number of changes, including changing the procedure that caused foam to shed off Columbia's external tank and breach the shuttle wing. 
Senior shuttle official Wayne Hale subsequently recalled his horror at learning of another foam loss on Discovery, saying, I think that may have been the worst call of my life. I had previously received a call informing me that my child had been injured in a car accident and was on the way to the hospital in an ambulance. That decision was poor. It got worse. Thankfully, nothing important was impacted by the foam, saving the crew. NASA eventually found that the temperature swings the tank experiences are related to the fissures in the foam and it made additional improvements in time for a much more successful trip in 2006. 